Hello, John Phillips here with Mansfield University's Computer Science Department. In this video, uh, I'd like to continue our discussion of the uh, Git uh, version control software. Uh, last time we looked at using it on a Ubuntu Linux server. This time I want us to log into our Windows develop, uh, developer server that we set up uh, in a previous video. And so to do that, um, launch your developer server on AWS or wherever you have it and get your IP address, plug that in, username administrator with a capital A and uh, you might need to do the drop down, you can set your display and other things and when you have it like you want, go ahead and connect need a password and then have it not show that message again and yes, to connect Okay, great. So here is my Windows server up and running. And uh, let's go ahead and minimize that other window for now. Okay, so in, on this server, when we created it, we had NetBeans installed. We installed that. And I'm going to go ahead and launch NetBeans. All right, now we had a uh, Java application that we were working on. Uh, let's say that I want to take this application and, uh, and start uh, version control tracking using Git. How do you do that? Okay, well, go up here to Team, choose Git, and tell it to initialize this repository. Let me try one more time. Let me click on the application itself, see if I get the same message. Okay, so yeah, make sure you click on your main application project uh, and then it'll fill this in for you and we'll say okay. All right, now the next thing we need to do is uh, go, go to uh, team and you see the menus have changed. We now have add, commit, diff, some of the things we talked about when we did this on the command line. Right here, I guess, open uh, either global configuration or configuration. Let me try global configuration. It says it does not exist yet. Do you want to create it? So it's going to create this git config file, dot git config, for the administrator. I'll say yes and it's empty right now. So what we want to put in here is the uh, in square brackets the word user and then we want to put in uh, name equals and then your name whatever your name is or whatever you want to go by as the committer for these uh, git um, commits that you'll be doing and then you need to also include your email address, once again, whatever email you want associated with uh, the work you're doing. So I will put my MU email address here. Okay, so after you get that done, save that file and then you can close it. And so now, as you make your commits, it'll associate your name and your email with each commit and then some other member of your team works on the project on their own system uh, when they make their commits it'll use their name and email address and so a as multiple people work on the project you'll be able to see who does what alrighty so uh, after you've done that then it's already done the add command for us it's added uh, Java application one and it's ready to for us now to do our commit so it automatically did that for any files that we had. It automatically added them. And so we can go ahead now and do a commit. Initial commit will be my message. And notice it says the author and the committer and uh, the files that are being committed. There could be several. It's, in this case, it's just the one. And we'll say commit. 
And then notice the green file it was green there. It's now black. And so it is tracking it. And so it gives you a variety of, of indicators here on uh, what the status of your files are. Okay, wonderful. Well, so that's how you use Git. It's just under Team. Also, that you can uh, right-click on a, you know, say you add a new um, item here, you can go down and get to Git uh, shortcut menu that way also. And so you, you have a variety of commands there. Now, what if I want to put this up on GitHub? We looked at creating a GitHub account last time. And uh, so let me go ahead and go there. Um, launch Google Chrome Google Chrome and uh, um, so I want to go to github.com and I get there you can create a new account if you need to if you haven't done that yet or if you have an account choose sign in and put your username Uh, or your email address. Okay, so I'm logged in. You can have it save your password if you want to. Um, okay, so great. We're logged in now. And what I want to do is take that uh, project we just created and put it up here on GitHub. So to do that, I need to create a new GitHub repository. So this little plus drop down that lets you add a new repository and this repository name will be uh, let's call it uh, I don't think it has to match up with what the other the name of the project is I mean typically you might do that but let me just call it NB uh, NetBeans for NetBeans uh, uh, Git test something like that so we'll give it that name make sure you don't check readme and you don't add a license and don't add anything else there just go ahead and create repository so basically you created an empty repository if you select any of those other items you won't get this screen here um, and so it'll be more difficult to to do things but so just do it just like I showed you and then um, what we want to do is push an existing repository Okay, so we'll click Java application one, we'll come up to team. We want to push this up to GitHub. And so we'll come down to uh, remote and then push dot dot dot. And in that spot, we want to push the HTTPS name of our GitHub uh, repository, the path to it. We'll paste that in. It wants to know the user. Put your name, your GitHub name, that is. And we could choose save password if we want to. All right, so it's now saying, okay, it's going to push to the remote name of origin. And the path to that is HTTPS, github.com, your name, and then the name of the repository.git. And then the, your login information so that it can uh, uh, upload this, this to the GitHub server. So we'll hit next. And we want to select master to master next. And then finally finish. And it says, do you want to set up branch master to track the remote branch? Usually you want to do that so that if you make changes on another system, upload it to GitHub, you can then easily uh, track that that's happened and download it to this system. Okay, excellent. Now let's go back to our GitHub page and click on the MV Git test link. And there we see there is our application. We can click on that. We could go in and see the file that we created. And there it is. And so it worked perfectly. All right. So that's pretty much uh, what's involved. Um, there, there's a lot more to it than that, obviously. But hopefully this, this gets you started. And, uh, and then you can explore uh, the documentation to figure out how to do other things, look online. So uh, thanks a lot for watching.